Hello students, welcome to EPG Patsala. I am Dr. Nirmal Kumar Swai, Associate Professor, Department of Library and Information Science, Marsi Dayanand University, Rohtak. Today we are going to discuss about a module, Collection Development Policy and Procedure under the paper Special Li and Research Libraries. My mentor is Professor I.V. Malan, Central University of Himachal Pradesh. Well, friends, begin with learning objectives. The learning objectives of the module are as follows. What is a collection? Why collection is important? Defining collection development, collection development policy, defining collection development policy document. After all, why a policy should be there and the elements of collection development policy. What are the criteria of selections? Of the collections including all kinds of collections books journals or periodicals and electronic resources and the tools also to be used in this module we will go or discuss collection development policy and procedure uh, two broad aspects are to be discussed one is collection development policy and second is the procedure i mean how to design a collection development policy dear friends before that i would like to add a background aspect on collection development so that it would be easier to understand to about uh, the policy and the procedures to make it. Uh, first, collection development. Collections are core or the primary assets of a special or research library. A library is considered good only when its collections match to the satisfaction of its users or clients. At the same time, development of collection is not an overnight business, rather a continuous process. Building collection engages people, both the library professionals, the people, I mean the users, the availability of resources, the cost, the selection process, and currency in its use. While taking a break, I would like to say a little about collection. By and large, refer to books, journal, and other printed and non-printed materials. In the present context, collections have a wider connotations, largely including electronic or digital form. Collections, uh, you know, collection time was there in traditional form collection used to be the books and journals only and a wider range of publications are coming in to the library collections so maintaining collections and making them getting ready with those materials for the users is very difficult so for that what kind of collections should be built up in a library at the same time Library is to be considered both as a physical space at the same time a service organization. Why physical space has a meaning here? Suppose without considering irrationally, if we buy, purchase books and other materials, the library will be a dumping ground. So in this sense, selected materials, which is very much pertinent to the users should be brought into the library. At the same time, 
its availability different forms and formats accessible through different vendors and quick to through i mean to access those literatures by the users as put the library professionals in a in a dual drum equally two divisions in terms of its access free literature paid literature again has become a concern for library professionals you know two three things i have mentioned here you know probably when we say library we are not talking of the traditional library where only the materials or the collections are in the print forms by and large print forms are being replaced digital collections are being procured largely in the libraries especially research and special libraries so the user say we want immediate access to the pertinent literature related to our field especially in science and technologies so forms and formats of forms and formats of access is an important uh, issue like i have mentioned the library collections and we should purchase those materials including books journals which is very much required i mean by the users you know fitting into their expectations so how to deal all these issues what kind of materials to be purchased randomly if you go so i mean so emotionally whimsically and our budget will be lost and we cannot buy other uh, the required uh, materials collections will be uh, won't be good for uh, futures i mean for the future users so that these issues can be probably addressed through certain guidelines to the extent in a format and a written form which technically called a collection development policy in next part of this module we will discuss what the collection development policy is its elements and what are things to be described in that policy along with the procedure how to develop a written policy i have just talked about a policy policy is very much required because it is a formal document and any activities regarding collection development will be guided by that document if you don't have that not properly written then probably whimsically the things will be especially the collection will be brought to the library and it will be kind of a trash nobody will use and so before that you know it comes to our mind what a policy is in defining a policy well in a simplest form policy is a rule or set of rules or kind of guidelines formally written by a person or a team of persons approved by higher authority with the rules and sub rules concerning all the issues related to collection development it's a general kind of definition probably many things are clear from this these rules can be called with a formal name like we have a book title example collection development policy vivekananda library maharshi dayananda university 2016 so it's a name so policy is a formal document is a authority nobody can go beyond that certain things are written which kind of books journals or other materials are to be purchased with is written with rules sub rules clauses sub clauses so that the entire library collections will be guided by this it won't be subjective rather if we follow a policy that's why a policy should be there 
in each and every library as i have mentioned there will be certain rules which are you know broadly defined in main clause and there will be many sub clauses like we have code books or legal documents in that similarly as i mentioned similarly uh, in, in a code book in normal case these rules are unchangeable but opens for interpretations additions and amendments in certain cases if it is required well well first and a uh, foremost thing comes to our mind why a collection development policy at all sometimes without this also the library works but the tragedy happens without a policy or a framework or a formal guidelines in it is realized in long run sometimes we do we go we manage we run the library without that but what is the benefit of having this will be discussed in this uh, module you know though there could be many reasons for a collection development policy rather i would like to use reasons with four broad headings subscribing to the ifla guidelines you know ifla guidelines means ifla designed 1980s a guidelines a generalized guidelines although it may not be fit to all kinds of libraries uh, i mean to all nations but still some formula of making a uh, development collection development policy can be brought through the first criteria i mean the first region could be selection of library materials you know selection is very important we simply uh, cannot uh, casualize can i mean casually consider this uh, selecting library materials or buying or purchasing library materials randomly without any criteria you know what does it happen because we have less i mean uh, cost and this resource crunch has become a common phenomena in and among the libraries in india as well as in other parts of the globe also so that's why uh, as we have discussed above library resources are primary to any library so its procurement should be done very strategically except few cases sources pertaining to the particular subject is very large in the market and some of them are useful to the clients of a library how to choose those relevant materials is a imperative issue before the library professionals planning you know uh, why should we have collection development policy there are many reasons I have, uh, as i have mentioned so purchasing the relevant library materials is no easy headway budgetary limitations are always there and constant problem increasing prices of the materials is based on a business attitude of the publishers is another concern at the same time study teaching and research is essential which needs library resources including books and journals so two things are there because publisher is a business group they publish say good books journals and other materials and it is to be noted in the field of science and technology you know the good publications the indian scientist use is published by international publishers ironically i don't know why indian publishers are not coming up say algever springers and many more so they charge they charge sometimes exorbitant our libraries uh don't cope to their the price chart at the same time 
without reading those journals especially uh, journals of science and technology our indian scientists in cannot go ahead because research in science and technology is very much needed for for a nation to grow say india is developing aspiring many and soon it's a good result in science and technology field especially in space science in in many other fields so that's why that's why uh, the planning uh, is very much needed what kind of materials to be purchased so handling these issues especially developing a good collections in libraries these issues may bring the authority into an emotional and subjective mode which may lead to procuring redundant materials filling the physical areas consuming on necessary manpower and finally with the end result is a zero you know what does it mean again referring back to the basic proposition why should we have a formal or written collection development policy unless we have it is also observed in many cases be it librarians be it library staff be it uh, teachers communities in uh, or the scientist communities in research and special libraries or teachers of uh, university libraries what do they do sometimes budget is spent you know in a subjective mode maybe the librarian is biased maybe a, a teacher is doing good, good work in university and may say please go for this journal and so that's why suppose we buy those books or journals where to keep all those because so that's why and the end result is zero so uh, you know demand of a formal rule book rule book rather is very much warranted here so a formal rule described in a policy can make a smooth flow of materials with the high relevancy with an affordable cost for the researcher because these days you know we all library people and uh, library and information science professionals we are seriously under threat and it's a continuous threat of you know finance crunch budget cut so that's why a formal policy can help us in uh, in buying suitable materials suitable collections to the library another point i would like to highlight especially those are not aware of library activities the communities of library and information science professionals for them library very well our uh, sr rangnathan the father of uh, library science in india has uh, said a long days back i mean long years back library is a growing organism it's a big organization probably you know many accreditation agencies have recognized also in india in abroad so if it is a special or research library if it is a university library it should have a beautiful good big and nice library system and library is 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 a basic for any development of any university or so that's why public relations dealing with large crowd of users sometimes in in universities we we have 10 to 15000 students and other communities also they interact with us so uh, you know public relations are very much needed and how to deal those public relations with the users with the patrons with the special users so a formal kind of uh, rules is very much needed to guide all these public relations that's why another aspect uh, i would like to highlight here uh, why should we have a policy 
collection development policy because in wider context it is said in wider context so many activities that you know suppose a question is asked suppose uh, any dignitaries visited a university or a research center or a vice chancellor visited other universities if he or she i mean the vice chancellor is has received a gift book gift from other universities so where the book should be kept so ultimately book is kept because it is property of the university so in wider context that's i'm saying if people give donations and uh, you know and uh, the agencies interact with the library so there should be some kind of rules to deal with this otherwise library is a growing organization uh, with extended activities sometimes functions as a nodal center for its parent organization in terms of donation from the dignitaries participating agency organ of a consortium are all the modern activities of the library by keeping in mind for future development a collection development policy can be helpful in guiding and functioning of the uh, library okay theoretically speaking having a collection development policy sounds very well but uh, unfortunately many big and old universities don't have a proper formal collection development policy we i mean the research libraries and the university libraries should have a properly defined with all kinds of need bit of things regarding collections so procedures for a collection development policy we are going to discuss it's very difficult the most crucial part of a collection policy is to follow a procedure or multiple procedures in terms of steps to go ahead and defining the policy elements here i would rather like to suggest that to follow some of the options in developing a collection development policy the options are like this for a new library the authority i mean the the library people the librarian and the higher authorities of the parent organization may consult or follow the policy of neighboring institute of repute if it is a new library because you know suddenly guided by the rules and regulations of uh, making a library policy will be a, a problem because following a, a policy document sometimes doesn't work because uh, in local and different context that may not work so start following uh, up nearby or neighboring institute so that helps in case of a research library the policy is to be followed by the uniform policy of the central organization of which the library is in this option i would like to suggest suppose uh, there are numerous indian agencies especially in the field of science and technology in case of social science also we have icar we have csir we have icssr so there are many institute uh, functions under this umbrella term say csir they started calling csir labs also so in that case it is uh, not to make it's not uh, possible even feasible not allowed probably Uh, to have a different uh, collection development policy so it is uh, guided or uh, bound by the the policy developed by the central agency third option is the library is already having a collection development policy in any form if it is old or new or partially functioning or defunct it needs to be amended in terms you know in that case don't go for a a structural change in terms of it's to be amended or uh, certain elements to be added in terms of factors uh, which affect the library some of them have been uh, discussed above also you know if for designing a uh, collection development policy uh, what could be the elements because after all it is uh, it is a 
formal document certain guidelines will be there so uh, color policy elements includes uh, uh, introduction first so in the introductory part collection level policy should have a name like of a book in the introductory part the mission statement of the library the purpose of the policy and the audience to whom it is addressed should be there at the beginning uh, a general statement before moving i mean a specific aspect that a general statement should be there in this element a uh, general aspect of the library is to be mentioned in terms of subject profiles user profiles collection profiles and also funding profiles which is very important further you know the brief statement about the user communities the type of collection including the format subjects budgetary overview and if any agreement with the agencies should be part of this general statement subject profiles you know subject profile refers to that what are the subject under which the collection are procured importance of the subject in terms of study teaching and research so that budgetary allocations can be done smoothly uh, we must have observed in special libraries in research libraries in university libraries the budget allocation to a field of science and technology to that in emerging areas are different uh, other than uh, its social science uh, counterpart this should be kept in mind uh, in academic terms books in science and technology in the emerging areas are uh, in most cases published by springer elgiver and other foreign publishers with a high cost so the budgetary allocation is relatively higher than its social science counterpart you know selection criteria is uh, another important aspect like uh, through this criteria only we can build good co collections to the library selection criteria is a stage of full proof method by which only good and relevant materials get into the library at the same time in the policy a defined descriptions are highly recommended to the book selectors there will be certain general methods on the basis of these the selection can be done this is a generalized method specifically for books periodicals and other uh, electronic uh, resources first is a subject matter second is potential use third will be relating to the collection fourth will be bibliographic consideration and the last will be the cost selection criteria for books and periodicals or journals and the electronic content will be different in case of uh, selection of books certain tools are very useful which uh, would i mean must be featured in the collection development uh, policy uh, document Uh, one is book reviews i'm talking about the tools uh, the recommended list subject list comprehensive resources sometimes publishers and online bookstores provide that and weekend newspapers also saturday and sunday book reviews are published in periodicals also there is a specific uh, review section sometimes at the end of the periodical and uh, you know in case of periodicals unlike your books uh, a little change in the criteria so we must see the purpose scope and the audience of the periodicals accuracy sometimes local interest sometimes uh, back volumes indexing i mean where is it is indexed cost also demand its availability and last very important probably in the indian case not only india in other parts of the world also for the academics the impact factor of the periodical so for the tools of uh, periodical selection is concerned is bit uh, difficult like i mean different from the books but still there are selective guides directories of periodicals and newspapers sometimes a publisher catalog also helps us in choosing good uh, periodicals periodical lists and citations 
sometimes a citation also provide on the quality of a periodical another aspect uh, is very uh, useful selection of uh, electronic resources subject coverage to be kept in mind cost uh, considerations access and login aspect technical support considerations and of course the legal issues friends uh, in this uh, uh, collection development policy <coughs> uh, the tools for selections is very important uh, in case of books the tools are different in case of periodicals or journals it is again different and uh, another aspect uh, in electronic resources which is a growing demand of the users in case these tools or periodicals uh, uh, say and resource electronic resources uh, trial versions is very important trial versions of the software i mean uh, uh, the electronics uh, resources vendors and sometimes suppose we go after a single vendor they may charge exorbitant which is difficult may be difficult for the libraries to purchase or to have mou or agreement with that so in that case options are open go for alternate vendors then alternate products uh, alternate products in the sense uh, uh, like uh, suppose uh, instead of buying a particular uh, journal or particular uh, vendor so we can go for similar kind of journal which is available with a little less cost and the review sources are there also library journals and there are online and databases so these tools would be very useful uh, uh, evaluation method is uh, as we have discussed already in this uh, library uh, you know is uh, funded heavily uh, these days uh, the soaring uh, price price of the uh, journals periodicals books and electronic resources is very difficult to cope so whatever we have whatever we uh, uh, provide through our service to the users or the clients it should be evaluated collection evaluation method after the procurement of the library materials the collections are processed and ready for use after sometimes months or years it is found that some of the collections are uh, never used in terms of nobody has issued the book if the book is not used for a couple of years together notably the book may not be useful book may be good or bad we are not discussing here so library uh, people i mean the authority uh, take a decision like we will uh, stop um, buying or we will we, without the books from the library just to keep uh, the uh, space safe for its replacement uh, say uh, we just discuss without policy uh, so without policy should be part of main policy which can be effectively with the book out and the physical space is cleared for for the replacement this is very important uh, without policy as defined without policy is required if a book is not used for a long period that doesn't mean the book is not good but it has a contextual value uh, in that particular uh, library so decision to be taken uh, to students uh, we are uh, coming closer uh, to the end of this module or uh, the short span of time so if you summarize what to have we learned the first the importance of collection and collection development is not uh, overnight business it is a continuous process and at the same time by looking at the cost uh, usage and demand of the uh, users uh, we should uh, purchase the relevant materials uh, i mean collections to the library so that a proper guidelines or proper uh, formally written 
guidelines is needed what we technically called uh, collection development policy and also we discussed how to design or make a policy fruitful so certain points uh, we have discussed thank you